everybody, this is Laura, City Scrapper. I'm so glad you could join me on my channel today. Today I have a layout that I made for Stretch the Sketch and for Best of Christie's Beautiful Life, 30 Days of Sketches, Day 19. Today's sketch was created by Scrapbook Challenges. And for this month's Stretch the Sketch, I'm going to shrink the sketch and make a smaller six by nine inch layout. A while back, I took a class with Janet Fritz from Galaxy Girl Creations. It was called Impactful Storytelling, and it helped me to tell the story of who I am and some significant points in my life. And so for today's layout, I am scrapbooking the first years that I was a teacher. I've been teaching for more than 26 years. This was one of my first classes when I was teaching in a small private school called the River School. It's not in existence anymore, but I really enjoyed teaching there. These were probably my favorite years of teaching, and I cannot get over that the children that I taught during this time period are now well into their 30s. It's crazy. There's one photo that's a little bit more of a close-up. I didn't want to include any close-ups of any of my students, regardless of how old they are now. But the close-up that you see is a picture of me and my daughter. My daughter used to attend the Montessori Center that was in the same building as the school I was teaching in. And it was really nice. I got to spend a lot of time with her when she was three years old. I drove her to school every day. She used to stay in my classroom and eat her breakfast and then... Some of the kids who were older than her would walk her down to her Montessori classroom. And uh, I have a lot of really good memories of those days. I'm sure she doesn't remember them because she was so little, but it was definitely a good time in our lives. The collection that I'm using today is a My Mind's Eye collection called The Sweetest Thing. Years ago, My Mind's Eye used to have a collection name and then they would have usually four different color schemes within that collection. So this includes the bluebell and the honey color schemes. I decided that I wanted to have a mixture of yellow, red, it's like a reddish pink color and blue. I thought that that would be a nice combination. I didn't want to use primary colors. I tried pulling out some of my school papers, but I just didn't like the way any of that looked. So I decided on these papers. I cut a six by nine inch piece of pattern paper, that off-white chevron, and then I chose some smaller pieces of paper. I had to do quite a bit of measuring to divide the paper into three parts and make three equal size strips, but I managed to do it even with my not so fantastic mathematical skills. And then I mounted these very small photos. I printed these out on my Canon selfie and then I crop them down to approximately two and a half inches by two and a half inches, although they're a little bit wider than they are tall. I wanted to include a scalloped strip on the left-hand side. You could see on the right-hand side of the layout, there's a chipboard scallop, but that was just too big. And then I tried using some pink or almost red pieces of paper that I just had on the layout, but I moved them to the left because they were just not the right color. They were too bright. And then I decided to just use a strip of that same paper that I used to the right of the center photo. So I cut a very thin strip and I placed that along the edge of the pattern papers. And I'm just using my fingers to push back that ATG adhesive because it's such a thin strip that the strip of adhesive was actually wider than the strip of paper. To ink the edges of the pattern papers on the layout, I'm using some Distress ink in Vintage Photo. I like the way inking the edges of all the papers on a layout kind of brings everything together. And then I also like the idea of making this look a little bit older, even though I hate to admit that these photos are getting to be quite old at this point, or the images anyway, but they are getting old at this point, so I thought that the vintage photo would be a good match. As I said, I wanted to include a scallop on the left, but I wanted it to be on the smaller side, so I ended up using a Fisker's punch, and I used some of the pattern paper from the collection in blue, and I punched out a border strip, and now I'm inking the edges. 
I was a little worried that I wasn't going to have enough room for my title, but I did end up fitting a title in there and I like the color and the detail of that border strip. So I cut that down to size and then I inked the edge of it. And now I'm going to work on my title. To write out my title, which is River School, I'm using a set of dies that was in my stash. I'm afraid I don't know the manufacturer, but these are letters that are approximately one inch tall and they have a very small stitching around the edge as dies sometimes do. I just love when they have that stitching. I cut it out twice, once in blue and once in the yellow, the same color yellow that's already on the layout. And I'm layering the yellow on top of the blue letters and I already inked the edges so that there would be some definition for the letters and I just liked the way this made the title a little bit more legible. And I'm gluing the yellow letter on top of the blue letter and just offsetting the blue letter a little bit so that it would be a little bit visible but not too prominent and then that helps it stand out from the background. I want to include some photo corners, so I use an EK Success scalloped photo corner punch, and I punched out some photo corners in the three different colors that are on the layout, and then of course I inked the edges of those photo corners, just as I did everything else on the page with the vintage photo. I noticed that there was a pattern paper. It's the same color scheme as the chevron background, and it had some circles and I thought that these circles would look really nice on the layout. So I'm using my Creative Memories cutters. It just took me a little bit of time to figure out which size to use. So I use the blue cutter, which makes the smallest circle when you're cutting on the inside of the circle. And I cut out three of these circles and I'm going to be using them next to all three photos. At this point, I wasn't really sure what embellishments I wanted to use, but I thought that these circles would be a good base for the embellishments. So I inked the edges of all three of those circles, and then I put them to the side because I wanted to get my title attached down to the page. I don't want to lose any letters. I have been known to lose some embellishments along the way, so I'm always anxious to get certain things attached down and this title is one of them. Sometimes I'll find a letter that I had been looking everywhere for or another embellishment attached on the back of a piece of paper like a month later and I didn't want to cut these letters again. So I'm using ATG adhesive. I'm attaching them down. First I attached the word river starting from the left and then I started the word school on the right. So I started with the L and that way I could make sure that the R and the L are both the same distance from the edge of the page so that it would look well spaced. And I wasn't concerned about how much space there was between the two words. So Now I'm adding those circles to the page. I'm tucking them behind the photos and then I use some adhesive and I attach them down. And you can see here how I'm pulling up the photo to get those circles underneath. And so in some cases, I put a little bit of extra adhesive underneath the photos, especially the corners of the photos, to help keep them anchored to the page. I certainly could have cut these circles rather than put them underneath the photos, but I like to leave things whole if I can because you never know if I change my mind later and I want to pull those circles out a little bit. I'm always thinking about that because I do always change my mind. I didn't change my mind in this case though. I left the circles as they were. I'm adding the photo corners now. I'm putting two different colors on each photo but different colors than the strip of paper that the photo is resting on. So I attach all of those photo corners down and then I decided I wanted to switch the corners on the center photo. So then after I switched those photo corners around, I started to work on the embellishments. And these are all embellishments from that My Mind's Eye, The Sweetest Thing collection. So the first embellishment that I saw that I really liked was this heart. And I had it on the bottom, but then I found a layered embellishment and I 
took some of the layers apart and I decided that it would be best to have the heart in the center and then spread those two embellishments out since they're so similar to each other. And that I wanted to put some brads on the layout. So I took out my little brad kit and I'm punching some holes. Excuse the fact that there's some shaking that goes on when I do that. And I put a hole in the center of the top and the bottom circle and then in between the two words. I'm going to be using some solid color brads. I use a slightly smaller yellow brad on top and then a little bit bigger one on the bottom and then an even larger blue brad between the two words of the title. You can see here I had a lot of multicolored fancy brads but I thought that there was enough going on on the page that the smaller solid ones would be a better choice. And I'm happy with those off-white circles. I think that they really helped to make the embellishment stand out. Now I'm adding some self-adhesive pearls to the layout. I put a larger one in the center of the heart sticker. And then I'm adding a whole bunch of those very, very tiny self-adhesive pearls to the embellishment that's on the very bottom and the very top of the layout. I think that those embellishments look like doilies to me anyway. They're very delicate, so I thought that a small delicate pearl would be a good match for them. And I'm applying them with tweezers. These aren't the right tweezers, but even with the tweezers, I have a little bit of trouble getting some of those really, really tiny pearls on the spot of the embellishment that I wanted them to stick to. But I did end up figuring it out in the end. And then I decided to use the medium size pearl on each of those six photo corners. I really enjoyed making this layout and looking back on my first class as a teacher and I remember every one of these children's names. It was just a really wonderful experience to get to teach this class. I really hope that you enjoyed this video everybody. Please look in the description box. There is a list of all of the participants in this month's Stretch the Sketch and also a playlist of all of the videos for Best of Christie's Beautiful Life 30 Days of Sketches. Have a fantastic day and I will see all of you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.